I made status effects in Roblox Studio, featuring damage over time, buffs and debuffs, stacking, removing effects, and more. Hello guys, I recently got back into Pilgrim, and uh, seeing how much that game depends on status effects, I thought it would be fun to, you know, try and make them myself, and so I did. Shout out to I'm Hiatus for making this stun handler V2.1, he actually helped a lot with this project, and without further ado, let me demonstrate how this works. After downloading the module, link in the description, you simply put it inside of server script service. Then, make a tool with a script inside. I also like to turn off can be dropped, but it doesn't really matter. Just don't forget to turn off requires handle in case you don't have a model for your weapon. First thing first, you've got a required module, and now follow these steps to select the status effects. Make a table. Make two more tables inside of the table. Name them opponent and self. Instead of this, you will make a table for each effect you want. The self effects will apply to you, for example, if your attack gives you a buff. And if you do not want that, you can simply remove this part of the table. And now, add a duration for each effect. This is also where you add stacks for effects to require them, like bleed, for example. Once you have all your effects ready, make a new table for damage. Here you can add physical, magical, and true damage. You can also delete them if you don't want them, it doesn't really matter. Like this, for example, would still work. To use the module, you simply give it your character, the target, the damage, and the effects. Here's an example script that creates a hitbox and attacks every humanoid once. You can either set the transparency to 1, or simply delete this part of the script, if you do not want the hitboxes to show. Also, make sure it is not a local script. And you should now have a working attack, but we're not done yet. If you haven't already, download the second script in the description, and put it inside of starter character scripts over here. This script will let you see your current status effects as GUI on the screen. As you can see here, my attack deals 10 damage, but if I have weakness, it only deals 9 damage. It is also possible to get infinite effects. Simply set the duration as a string instead of a number. And if you want your effects to show up visually, download the third script in the description and add it to starter player scripts. There's currently only burn here, but you should be able to copy it and change the word burn to the name of the effect. Also make sure there's a particle emitter with the same name as the effect inside of the script. And now you should have everything you need to use status effects. But if you keep watching, I will show you how to make more advanced weapons with animations, as well as a heavy attack. After making a model for my weapon, I simply follow this guide by completed loop to animate it. Here is the part of the script that does the holding animation. The weapon has two scripts, one local and one on the server. There's also a remote event as well as several animations. Here is the local script. Using a local script is important since it's the only way to detect the keyboard input. Here I'm checking for when the player presses R. And in the server script I do the attack as well as the animating. I want this weapon's heavy attack to stun enemies, so I'm gonna show you how I add that effect to the game now. So first, I make a table with stun as a status effect inside of it, and then I tell the attack module that I want to apply that effect to someone. Since this is not an attacker effect such as weakness, or a target effect such as protection, I'll put it inside of the passive slot, which is over here. So first of all, we make sure that the target exists. And then we could check for when this stun goes away. So we save the speed that the humanoid has to begin with, then we set it to zero and wait for the stun to disappear, and once it does, we set it back to what it was before. Hopefully this should work, and I guess we'll test it out now. But before that, let me just make this dummy apply stun rather than weakness. And then let's change the duration so it's not 8 seconds. I cannot move. Oh, and then I can move. That was a close one though. Wait, I have stun. Okay, maybe that does not work. I guess that's probably the way, the best way to do it, right? So, something like that, right? Let's see if this works. I cannot move at all now. Alright. And how do we get out of this situation? I guess, what happens if we... Wait, no, I'm gonna die. Oh, no. Well, this shouldn't error at least. Yeah, as you can see, there are no errors. 
So yeah, I guess that works. And what if he stuns me for half a second? Now I should hopefully actually be able to move. Yes. Alright, there we go. And last check is if he stuns me for longer than the attack lasts. Can it like, yeah, it does in fact reset. Okay, nice. So yeah, I just made a new status effect that quickly. I, I guess it did take like a second, but it, it should be a lot easier to make stuff such as that um, damage over time effects. Like if we wanted poison, we could literally add it right now by just doing this, copying this, poison, and now we literally have poison. Like it's that simple. And since I added poison here, if we actually make this still poison rather than stun, it should show up. Uh, although it looked like fire, but you know, it'll still work. So let's see. Yeah, uh, it works. And if we click, if we quickly just make this green, oh, that was, it's not meant to be a color sequence. I don't know why I did that. And if we just make it green, yeah, we have poison now and it's dealing, yeah. Uh, although we only have poison for like half a second or whatever, but yeah, still. So anyways, uh, back to the weapon. All right, so I made these two parts and then a rig and this quick script. And as you can see, this uh, dummy walks between these two parts. And if I try and stun him with my weapon. Okay, I did not just miss that. And as you can see, it stuns him. And after a few seconds, he'll start walking again like nothing ever happened. So yeah, this works on NPCs as well as uh, players, which is great. Now your game should have working status effects. If you have any questions, write them down in the description and I'll try to help you out. And if you learned anything new, or if this video is helpful at all, subscribe! I'll be posting new Roblox Studio content sometime in the future. And I guess that's it. Thank you for watching.